we read the scriptures, we have to read it line upon line, right? Because that's the only way we can understand it. What your pastors do, they just read it, then they go off their own mind, right? So he said, there you should go into Egypt again, right? So, Egypt, so you're familiar with the Bible? So you remember the children of Israel, right? They were in captivity in Egypt, right? And the Lord delivered them. You remember the ten plagues uh, with Moses, Pharaoh, let my people go, right? So they were in captivity in Egypt. So when he said, thou shalt go into Egypt again, what is that synonymous for? Uh, oh, it's slavery again, right? He's comparing that because they, were, they wasn't in Egypt having fun. They was in Egypt getting affliction, and we're going to prove that. Hold that. Give me Exodus 20. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, right. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. That's so right. now let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to read verse 68 from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Shall bring thee into Egypt, which is synonymous for what? Bondage, so God will bring you into bondage again. Go ahead. With ship. With what? With ship. So look at these, look at these, look at these. We were the ones, where's the one that has the slate, the uh, boats on? This one right here. Still. This is what happened to us. It said you shall go into slavery again with ships. We were the people that went into slavery on those cargo slave ships. Then this was written in the Bible. This was written, we read that in the Bible. Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery. With ships. Right, go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Right. And there ye shall be sold. And there ye shall be sold, go ahead. Until your enemies. So when he said there we shall be sold unto our enemies. When we got off those boats, these are the things that happened to us. You had the Arabs and the white man. You had them beating us. Where's the other depiction? Where's the other one I want? I think it might be the first. So you have here us on auction blocks. You see how they have us in captivity beating us. You see how they burnt us. Yeah, they still got those little blacks there with Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, right? So we're reading this in the Bible. The Bible prophesied this thousands of years that this would happen to us for not keeping his commandments. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies right. for bond men and bond women. We were, set, we were sold for slave men and slave women. Come on. And no man shall buy you. When it says no man shall buy us, nobody was able to redeem us. The only person that can redeem us is Christ. But think about all the people that tried to redeem us. You had Marcus Garvey, Nat Turner, uh, 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 Malcolm X, uh, what was the lady, uh, Harriet Tubman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. All of these people tried to save us, but they couldn't because the only way that we can be saved is by Christ. Now, I'm going to bring something else out for you. Read. Read that, read that verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again right. with ships right. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Right. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. When we got off those auction blocks, who were we sold to? Right. What, what, who? White people, right? He said, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies enemies right now let's get luke chapter 1 and verse 68 i'm gonna watch i'm gonna show you something a lot of christianity say that they're saved right what are they saved from our people ain't saved like i said before we still getting shot down in the street right. we wouldn't need to be saved if they made groups like black lives matter right. you know which don't help our people at all in the first place that that's that's a whole uh, 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 political agenda you see what I mean? But we not saved from nothing. We still the last hire, first fire. We still have inferior health care. We still are uh, 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 on the last of the totem pole. Like I said before, we get murdered in the streets by the other nations and by us as a people, right? 
So what is it that we're saved from? Right. So remember, we just said we were sold unto our enemies, correct? Now let's read this. Let's see what Christ is going to do when he returns. Read. See, this is the thing. This is what amazed me. When I was in Christianity for all those years, I never knew this. Then when I heard this being brought out, I'm like, damn, that was in the Bible the whole time? I never knew that, right? So now let's read, let's read Luke chapter one. We're gonna start at verse sixty-eight, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna show what Christ is gonna do when He returns. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter one, verse sixty-eight. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So again, this is New Testament. He said, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." These twelve tribes right here. He didn't say all nations. This is New Testament now. He said, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." Come on. For He hath visited. And redeemed his people. He said, For he had visited and redeemed his people. Not all nations, his people, right? Come on. It hath raised up a horn of salvation for us. He said, And raised up a horn of salvation for us. You see these possessive pronouns he's using? He's not saying everybody, it's only a specific people. Come on. In the house of his servant David, right? As he spake. By the mouth of his holy prophets. He's right. He spake this at, uh, at the very beginning. Go ahead. Which have been since the world began. Go ahead. That we should be saved. That when Christ returns, that we should be what? That we should be saved. Saved from what? From our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Are our enemies still in power today? Are our enemies still have their neck on us today? Do our enemies still use the power to keep us in, press, uh, uh, in oppression today? So we ain't saved yet. The Christ said he's going to save us from our enemies. So what does that mean for them? What, they, in <laughs> they in trouble. Give me Obadiah. Bring it out. Give me Obadiah. No, no, no. Give me Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 22. Now, even though I'm going to read this, we're going to still go back to different things of what we have to do to make sure that we're right when Christ returns, right? right. So give me Isaiah chapter 14, read verse 20, 21. The book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 21. A a matter of fact, start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Again, this is a prophecy. You remember when Christ was on the scene, was there an old, I mean, was there a New Testament? No, nah, there wasn't a New Testament, so what was he going off of? The Old Testament, right? The only thing that was for, the only thing in the New Testament that changed was Christ died for us and we no longer sacrifice. And then and also with that, we're no longer killed for certain sins that we've committed. Because in the Old Testament, we were killed if we committed certain sins like idolatry, certain fornications, and so on, right? So that's what Christ did was to give us that grace period to get ourselves together. A lot of Christians abuse grace and think they can do whatever they want to. No, that is a period of time for us to get ourselves together. Because back in the old time, we would have been dead already, right? right. But keep going. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. On Jacob. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. Again, only for the nation of Israel. Come on. And set them in their own land. And he's going to set us in our own land. We're not in our own land right now. Look around us, man. Look, I, I, we live in the worst conditions and our people are okay with that. No. I'm trying to get up out of here. No. I don't want to live in these conditions no more. I don't want to have to live on the bottom. I want to be able to live where I don't have to worry about my kids being in danger for something they didn't do. But that's the lot we've been given because of our sins. But God said, if we keep his laws, he will save us from our enemies. Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right. These strangers are going to cleave to the house of Jacob. Come on. And the people shall take them uh -huh. and bring them to their place. Right. And the house of Israel right. shall possess them. It said the house of Israel shall possess them. This ain't been read in your church, right? This ain't been read in our in our Christian churches. It said when Christ returns, Israel is going to possess these other nations. Possess means what? You own them. They do what you say do. Go ahead. In the land of the Lord. Right now, jump up to verse 21. Verse 21. Again, talking about they in trouble, right? Come on. Prepare slaughter for his children. What? Prepare slaughter 
for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Right, so that's their judgment for doing what they did to uh, God's people. So now, before we get to, I want to get John 3.16, right? Because this is a popular verse in Christianity. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, correct? That he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe on him should have everlasting life. That scripture has been in, in, indoctrinated into me ever since I was a little kid. I can remember that, no problem, right? But I had no idea what it meant. I thought that really meant that he came for everybody because that's what it says, right? Or at least we thought that's what it said. But let's really break it down and see. Come on. So do we have, we don't have that, uh, we don't have that poster, do we? The world poster? Okay. All right. Go ahead. Read that for me. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world. Right. So for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son. Right. So now, when we read this scripture, a lot of people have no idea what the verse above says. They don't even know which uh, verse 1 says, right? So let's go to verse 1 and see and get the context of what's going on. Read that. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees uh -huh. named Nicodemus. Right, Nicodemus, he was a man of the Pharisees. Go ahead. A ruler of the Jews. A ruler of the Jews. So this was Christ having a conversation with another man from the tribes of Israel, right? It wasn't with all people. But now, let's go up to verse 14. Read that. John chapter 3, verse 14. Uh -huh. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. It said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, right? So... Who did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness to? Do you remember? So remember, Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? So guess what? That's who he lifted. Uh, give, you got that in numbers? So Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to the children of Israel. It wasn't all nations, right? We're going to get that. Read that for me. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 6. Uh -huh. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people uh -huh. and they bit the people right and much people of israel died and much people of israel died why because we were complaining in the wilderness and the most high was judging us for our complaints after he had just delivered us out of captivity right so he told moses we're not going to read all of it but he told moses to make a staff with a serpent upon it and lift it up to the people and when they look at it they shall be healed right but remember it was much people of israel right so now let's go back to john chapter 3 verse 14. the book of john chapter 3 verse 14 and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so and at, just like moses lifted up the serpent in uh in the wilderness unto who israel right so he didn't lift it up to all nations come on even so even so just like come on must the son of man be lifted up the son of man is christ it said just like the son of man has to be lifted up was he lifted up to all nations no it was he, he that's why he's making that comparison just like moses lifted was lift, uh, lifted up to the children of israel even so must the son of man be lifted up to the children of israel come on let's keep reading that whosoever believeth it but now we get to whosoever right whosoever this is where it gets confusing to people come on that whosoever believeth in him so now let's let's see let's tackle this whosoever hold that you got what i want read that for me the book of acts chapter 2 verse 21 uh -huh. and it shall come to pass right that whosoever that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, uh -huh. shall be saved. Come on. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So I'm going to give you a comparison. So you you, you got children? So you go home, right? And you and you put on your refrigerator, you put a, a note. And it says, whoever wants a drink can have a drink. You know, you being nice today, right? You know, pop, whatever, juice. But then I break into your house. And then I see that note. And I'm like, oh, whosoever, right? Was that note written for me? No, it was only written for your family. It wasn't written to all nations. What did they do? They took, they robbed us, beat us, raped us, took our lamb, and took our book and inserted themselves in our book. So when it said whosoever, it wasn't talking about all people. It was talking about of the men of Israel, right? But let's keep reading. Go ahead. 
Book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Uh -huh. That whosoever right. believeth in him should not perish, right. but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Now we get to for God so loved the world, right? So, is there, so when you read the definition of world, there's many different worlds. You have a fish world, you have an animal world, you have a sea world, you have a land world, you have a, a what's the other? A, you, you, there's different worlds, right? So, sports, you got a sports world, all these different things, right? There's just science world. Just because you hear world doesn't always mean it encompasses, encompasses everything, right? So now, hold that. Uh, hold Isaiah. I mean, you're gonna have to hold a few things. Keep John. Hold uh, um, and give me First John chapter two, and I think it's verse fourteen. Um, bear with me just a second. So I, I'm, I'm gonna show you something real quick. I'm gonna try to find it. And so when we read this, we still think that it says uh, love not the world. You got it? Read that for me. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Now, listen to this. Love not the world. So, read up a verse before. Yes, sir. Verse 14. Uh -huh. I have written unto you, fathers, uh -huh. because you have known him that uh -huh. is from the beginning. Right. I have written unto you, young men, right. because you are strong. Right. And the word of God we're abideth in you. We're strong, and the word of God abideth in us. Right? Come on. And ye have overcome the wicked one. And we have overcome this wickedness. We have we have sit there and said we're going to keep God's laws despite of the wickedness that is set before us every day. Come on. Love not the world. Read that again. Love not the world. But in John three sixteen, he said, "For God so loved the world." Right. So what's the difference? There has to be, be, be different meanings. If he said. God so loved the world in one instance, but then he said love not the world in the other instance, right? Because in this in, in this instance, he's talking about the world's sin. This world does not follow God's laws. This world does not follow the Bible. So that's why he said love not the world. But that's now right. let's go back to John chapter 3, verse 16, and let's see the world that he's talking about. Come on. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. For God so loved the world. Now let's find out what that world is that Christ was talking about that he loved. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Uh -huh. But Israel shall be saved. Right. In the Lord with an everlasting salvation. It said, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You know how they say the lost tribes of Israel when we don't know who Israel is? Well, that's a lie. Because in the Bible, it says that they will be saved with an everlasting uh, salvation. So now they're making the Bible contradict itself because they're making God seem like a lie. Because God said they're going to have an everlasting salvation. So you're going to know who these people are. When you read in Revelations, the, uh, Revelations 21, there's 12 gates. And on those 12 gates is written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. So how is it that these uh, these people are going to be lost when the kingdom, they got their names on those gates? You have to know who these people are. That's why the scriptures say what they say, right? Talk, read. Oh. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. And guess what? We shall not, the world of Israel shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Let's see what he called Israel. World without end. He called us a what? World without end. He called the nation of Israel world without end. That's why in, up in the beginning of the verse, he said they shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. You are a world without end. Now give me John 18 and 20, I believe it is. Hold, still hold John 3.16. Give me John 18 verse 20. Because this is now we're gonna go to the New Testament. Now we're gonna see what Christ did. Read. You got it yet? Yes, sir. I know it's Wendy. <laughs> Bear with us. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Uh-huh. He said, Jesus said, I spake openly to the world. Go ahead. I ever taught in the synagogue uh -huh. and in the temple, right. whether the Jews always resort. Whether the Jews always resorted. Not all nations. Uh -huh. The world that he spoke openly was to the Jews. Now, there's another one. I think it's like John 9 and something. He says, uh, uh, I pray for them. For I pray not for the world. You see what I'm saying? You know what I want? Somebody else. So then another scripture, Christ says, 
I pray for them. I don't pray for the world, but I pray for those that you have, the Father that you have given me. So now we're starting to see what John 3.16 really means. It doesn't mean everybody is talking about the nation of Israel. You, you got what I want? 2.15. What is it? John 2.15. That's not it. We'll, we'll find it later, right? So it said, I speak openly, uh, not I speak openly, but it says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. John 7, 19. 7, 17, 17, 9. 17, 9. 17 and 9, okay. Look, we about to get it for you. Our memory ain't the best sometimes. It's, it's all right, but we still need help every now and then. Read that. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 9. Come on. I pray for them. Now, this is Christ speaking. Come on, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Mm. He said, I pray not for the world. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me. But for them which thou hast given me. Come on. For they are thine. Uh huh. And all mine are thine. Right. So now go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. What did he mean? That thou that you have chosen, that, you, that thou hast given me. From the very beginning, Israel was chosen, right? And we're going to read this in Deuteronomy. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And this isn't being this isn't being taught to our people. We're not being taught that we're a holy people unto the Lord thy God. What are we told? That we just niggas. Yeah, we ain't no good. We ain't never gonna amount to nothing. The only way you're gonna make it is be an entertainer, ball player, sports figure, or whatever, you know, comedian, rapper. That's the only way you Negroes is ever gonna make it. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee uh -huh. to be a special people uh -huh. unto himself. God said he chose us to be a special people unto himself. Out of all the people on the nation of the earth, he chose us. Come on. Above all people Read. that are upon the face of the earth. He said he chose us above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now give me Isaiah it's either Isaiah or Jeremiah, where it talks about if the sun and the moon uh, cease to exist, then Israel would no longer be more. You know what I'm talking about? So now that we read that, that God chose us, again, going to this lie that they said nobody knows who the Israelite or you can be spiritual Israel. That's a lie. Because in the Bible, it was said that if the children of Israel cease to exist, then this world would cease to exist because this world was made for us. It wasn't made for everybody. While, he, while they're finding that, give me 2nd Ezra, you know what I want, chapter 6. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, 6, verse 54. Read that. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Uh -huh. And after these, Adam also, right. whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So what we about to do here is get a little history. He's about to say, he's going back all the way to Adam. Remember, he, God made Adam. He made him Lord of, over all thy creatures. Adam named all the creatures, right? Go ahead. Of him come we all. And of him come we all, right? Go ahead. And the people whom also thou hast chosen. And the people whom thou hast chosen. Remember, he said in Deuteronomy 76 that he chose us above all nations upon the face of the earth, right? Come on. All this have I have I spoken before thee, uh -huh. O Lord, right? because thou madest the world for our sakes. God said he made the world for our sakes. Our people want to sit and gang bang over a block that they don't own and won't even cut a blade of grass on. But God said this entire world was made for our sakes. Come on. As for the other people. But now, guess what? What about the other people, though? The other people that God didn't choose. Read. Which also come of Adam. Because they come from Adam, too, right? Come on. Thou hast said they are nothing. Read that again. Thou hast said they are nothing. Oh. But be like unto spittle. He said like unto spittle. Spit. Read. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Guess what? This Bible ain't what people think. This Bible is only for you, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God is only dealing with you. Give me Matthew chapter 4. Oh, you found that scripture I was looking for? Let's read that. God is only dealing with us. He's never been for all nations, but that's what's been told in our, uh, in our Christian churches. That's the lie that this white devil has been portraying to our people for years and years and years. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the real Israelites, according to the Bible. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, 
chapter 31, verse 36. Uh -huh. If those ordinances... So start up at verse... 34. Uh, yeah, verse 35. Verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. which giveth the sun for a light by day. So he said, thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. Come on. And the ordinances of the moon uh -huh. and of the stars for a light by night. And he gives us the moon and the stars by night, right? Go ahead. Which divided the sea when the waves are at war. Come on. The Lord of hosts is his name. Right. If those ordinances depart from before me. So those ordinances, the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? God said, if those ordinances depart from me, go ahead. See if the Lord, uh -huh. then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation. So he said that if those ordinances depart, then the seed of Israel is going to cease to be from being a nation. But do we still see the moon in the day? I mean, the sun in the day? We still see the moon and the stars at night? So guess what? Israel is still a nation. That's They're right. not, don't, we can't listen to those lies that our, our those pastors tell us that Israel no longer exists. Right. They can't tell us that no more because we can read out of this Bible. Is there more on that? Yes, Go ahead. Then, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation right. before me forever. Uh-huh. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, uh -huh. And the foundations of the earth searched out beneath. So this is another thing too. Let's let this is why we gotta realize how real this Bible is. He said, if heaven can be measured, what is he, what is the white man always trying to do up in the sky? Find out different planets, go into space travel, land on the moon. God said they're trying to measure out heaven. God said, if heaven can be measured, come on. And the foundations of the earth. Search out beneath. And the foundations of the earth sound out, uh, found out beneath. Come on. I will also cast off all the seed of Israel. But guess what? They can't do it. It's impossible. They've been trying for years and they can't do it. That's why God said if they do that then, then the uh, children of Israel will cease to exist. Because this world was made for us. It wasn't made for them. Is there more on that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. For all that they have done, said the Lord. Uh-huh. Yes, so now... We know that, right? We see that, okay, this Bible is for us. God has chose us. John 3, 16 doesn't mean what it means, right? So now what do we have to do as a people? What do we have to do? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what verse I want. So what do we have to do as a people? What is our job now in knowing this? Because it feels good knowing this. And it, I'll put it like this. It feels good knowing this. But it angers us as well, right? Because we've been told all these lies. Hold, hold that. Give me uh, uh, 7 verse 9. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 9. So this is what happens. A lot of times when our people hear this, they're infuriated, right? They're infuriated. Go ahead. Be not hasty in thy spirit. Verse no, no, no. Seven. Verse seven. Yeah, verse 7. Verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. It says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. We're wise, you're wise. This upsets us, right? But what happens to our people once we start figuring this out? Go ahead. And a gift destroyeth the heart. But a gift destroyeth the heart. Why do you think a lot of these entertainers will never come, uh, uh, come out publicly and say what this is? Because they've been given gifts. It says a gift destroyeth the heart. If, we, if they come out and say this, they take away all their money. Prime example, look what happened to Deshaun Jackson. You remember that? He came out and he just said, we the real Israelites. But what did they do? They demonized that man. They did the same thing to Nick Cannon. And what did, Nick, what did they make Nick Cannon do? Recant everything he said. Why is it that you can come out as a black man, you can say you're a Buddhist, you, you follow Krishna, you can be a Muslim, you can be whatever you want to be, but don't say that you're an Israelite or we're going to destroy you. Why is that? Because it's the truth. They don't want us to know the truth. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.